Hi guys, happy Mother's Day. Welcome back to my readings. You know, I love you so much. Sorry I missed the reading last week, but I was busy at a show and I did, just didn't have the energy to do it when I got back. But anyway, I love you guys, very much so. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all of you that are mothers. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that have passed. Happy Mother's Day to all the fathers that are fathers and mothers. And know that I'm sending lots of love from my heart to yours. Today our reading is going to focus on self. Working on ourselves. Learning about ourselves, which is in essence difficult, especially if you are a mother. If you do dedicate your time mostly to your children, to your family, to your home. By the end of the day we're exhausted. You have no time to focus on yourself on the things that you are skipping out on, your health, a diet, rest, exercise, loving yourself more, making time for a massage or a manicure or a pedicure, or somewhere where someone has contact with you, they touch you, they massage you, they, they show you affection in one way or another. Um, we run out of time, we run out of money, we run out of energy, we just don't have the energy to do things sometimes that, that focus on ourselves because we give so much to others. And it is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to dedicate yourself to your family. Of course, they love you, they need you, they depend on you. You are their patriarch, you know, you are the boss, you are the one that guides them. They look up to you in every decision that they make and every single day that they have waking hours, they're there. And when they're asleep, they depend on you to watch over them, to protect them, to keep them safe so they can sleep, so they can dream, so they can have, you know, a lovely day when they wake up. They depend on you for that and you're the one that has to make the decisions that are based on all of those things for your children and for yourself sometimes that is very difficult and the more that we toil that we worry that we uh, focus our mind on things that are not positive on things that are negative and especially others that have influence in our lives they sometimes steer us down the wrong path and we tend to become fearful which is something that is on the table already, a message from Jesus. Be not afraid, only believe. Believe in yourself, believe in your strength, believe in your guides, believe in your angel that's there guiding you. They always will choose love over any other emotion or over any other situation. So you have to seek within yourself and know that if you are associating yourself and your children with someone that is not above and beyond that doesn't only show emotions of love towards you and your family it's time to make changes you need to surround yourself with people that support you not people that break you down or bring you down in any way the longer you stay in a situation like that the more you hurt yourself, the more you lose yourself is what happens. You lose your identity, you lose who you are, and you become this other person that's being fed to you every single day. And your children, your children are going to suffer. So as a mother, as a person of authority over your children and over your own life, and your home, your home, you are the boss in your home, okay? If you have a male partner, that male partner is the overseer. He is the one that protects and keeps the family together. If there is someone there that doesn't push to keep the family together with loving ways, with the total support of finances, of emotion, of time that he spends with family because it comes from the heart, because it's loving, then something has to change. You can have same-sex relationships. I'm sorry if I specify female and male. We each have a male and female within us. Those qualities live within us. It's our yin and our yang. It's, it's what makes us. We both have those qualities. Women sometimes have to play the part of the man and the woman because the, man, the male died or the male left, if there was one. And uh, they have to play both parts. So we all have those qualities in us. Sometimes we are with the same sex, but 
ultimately one will be the female and one will be the male. One will be the overseer and the other one is the one that takes care of the family. So you both have to put in 50-50. You have your role in life to play. You have your part. And there has to be that that equal parts, the equal partnership between the both of you. And if it doesn't exist, then there's a problem. There's a problem somewhere. Counseling, talks, family get-togethers and speak openly as to what is a problem, what can be changed, how it can be changed. And if it doesn't happen, then it's time to find what really truly makes you happy as a person, as a family, your children, they suffer and then they become what you were. They will only follow that karmic cycle. It's like the wheel that always turns and never stops. Well, they also become that, you know? So you have to break the cycle now before your children also, you know, become that. Which you fear, that which you are trying to keep them away from, you have to show them that you are strong, that you can rise above, that you can change things. They'll look up to you later on when they have a family, when they have children, so they'll say, well, my mom did this this way and this is the way I'm gonna do it as well because my mom was a hell of a woman. My mother is a hell of a woman and I am lucky, lucky to have her on this plane. My father passed away when I was three years old. She had a daughter that was three months old and a little daughter, which was me, that was three years old. That woman busted her ass. She never remarried. No man ever helped her. The men that always approached her, <clears throat> she was a very beautiful woman. They just wanted to use her. They didn't give a shit about the kids or the family or anything else. So she told them all where to go. At some point, my grandmother assisted her and came to live with her, her own mother. And she took care of her mother and of us. So she was above and beyond the, you know, what, what anyone could expect as a mother. She dedicated her life to us to raising us and I I can't thank her enough and in the end I when she needed me I came to her you know and uh, both my sister and I take care of her now she doesn't have to worry because she knows that her daughters are there to help with the decisions to help protect her to help her you know in her third part of her life you know the last part it's very painful for me to even think that she could leave my life so today this reading is dedicated to all of you that have lost your mother and that really that really it hurts <clears throat> because it does just the thought alone destroys me so I want you to know that I'm sending you all lots of love and support because I know you need it <clears throat> now I need it <clears throat> anyway Prayer. Prayer will help guide us when we have moments of fear or moments when we do not understand what's going on or why it's happening. Remember that a lot of influences that we have in this lifetime come from other lives, come from our soulmates, experiences that we have to re-experience or some that we have to break away from, some that we have to forgive, some that we have to be compassionate with ourselves and with others because they may not understand even though you are growing spiritually and karmically and you're learning more not everyone does and not everyone can learn at the same pace and some people are more and more fearful than you and they can learn from your strength from what you do from the changes that you implement in your life for you and your children some of us are lucky enough to have our parents still there with us so we can ask them for assistance. We can ask them for guidance, for advice. But the cards that came out on the table, this was the main thing that I asked for Mother Mary. She is the ultimate mother. She is the ultimate soul that has walked this planet and has given unconditional love, her son, <clears throat> and watched everything that happened to him. She could not have uh, dealt with that easily. You know that must have been like it was happening to her at the same time that it was happening to him. If you follow Jesus, he is my 
He is my everything, so I can't live without that thought. Mother Mary, I asked when I was shuffling her deck, what is the main energy that I need to work on in those that are going to be listening to my channel at this time? The compassion came out immediately. As soon as I stopped the prayer, this came out. I see and feel others, points of views, with forgiveness and kindness. So we need to, sometimes we even put ideas in our mind that are not even real. It's just what we think another person has thought about us, done to us, uh, feels about us, and it could be completely wrong. We also have limitations, you know, we're not perfect, none of us are. We all get crazy ideas in our head, which are not real. And later on, by communication, we find out that we could have been wrong. We could have had the wrong idea about someone, completely wrong. And just ruined a lot of good things because we were wrong, we were wrong. But that only comes later. When you have had compassion for yourself and for that person, when the decisions that you have made that were wrong, you were able to forgive yourself compassionately because you need to know that you're not always right. But sometimes you are, and when you are, you need to follow through because if you don't, it just, it crushes you, your ego or your, it crushes some part of you that, that makes you strong, you know, that makes you move forward in life. And then you just kind of, kind of become stagnant. You kind of become someone that cannot make a decision. And that is not always good in life. You need to always keep that part of you strong. When you make a decision, you feel, yes, this is the right decision. Even if in, later on, you find out that you could have done it in another way. And it could have, you know, the, the end could have been a little bit different. You know, it could have hurt less people or hurt yourself less. But either way, you need to make strong decisions sometimes that, that are really hard to do. But with compassion, with compassion, a prayer, and not being fearful to make the strong and important decisions in your life, it's going to help you get through. Sometimes other people hurt us. Okay, their decisions, their communications, their choices that they make, not us, but someone else that hurts us. We need to be able to see them with compassion, to feel compassion for them because perhaps they are making a wrong decision, but you can't, you can tell them but they're not going to listen. They have to go through that learning curve. They have to go through that experience themselves. You know, um, someone could be focusing more on money or on material things and less on love and, and taking care of their family. and. You have to be compassionate with those souls because those souls also have a learning curve in life that they have to learn. And if they don't learn it in this one, they're going to learn it in the next one. And it's going to hurt them even more when they realize the things that they did, the mistakes that they made, that they focused more on material things that mean absolutely nothing sometimes and less on love or on the people that were there for them at that time and they didn't realize it. You need to feel compassion for these people as well because hatred or um, remorse or all of the other negative emotions that you could have on the other coin of the other side of compassion is not good for you because it'll just eat you up alive and it'll hurt you as well. So by looking at them with compassionate eyes but still making the tough decisions that you need to make is a good way to break away from situations or people or, or relationships that are not serving you in a positive way or your children. Remember that mothers. Okay, it's hard for me to to say and be strong but at times we must, we must because if we focus on our kids and say, my God, what is going to become of them if they continue to live through this, you know, five years from now, how do you see it, you know? How hurt can you <clears throat> can you be and then your children too? And at that point, it's hard to turn back the clock. At that point, it's hard to forgive and be compassionate and, and forgive yourself because you're going to have to be the one to, to look at it and say, wow, what have I been doing with my life? What choices? Why did I make these choices? My family, why didn't I focus more on them? Why, you know, why did I let so much time go by before I made the changes that I needed to make in my life to help them, to be more focused on them? Because truly, we, you know, we want to have a nice home and we want to have a nice car, we want to have a nice job and we want to do good, 
the only thing that really matters in life is love. It's your, your children, the love that you have for your family, the love that they have for you, the love that you have for your friends, for your romantic partners. You know, those are the important things in life because that's how we learn. That's how our spirit grows. You know, um, also our beliefs, you know, it, for some people that's very important, it's very strong, their religion, because they dedicate themselves to being a religious person, a religious figure, and that's what their life is about. So I can't discount our beliefs or spirituality, how we grow, but each one of us is different. Some people are completely devoted to their religion, to their beliefs. We can't knock that either, because that is how they grow. That's what they're doing in this lifetime. Next lifetime they may come back and they could be atheists, believe in absolutely nothing because they already dedicated their entire life to believing in, in one God or believing in whatever it is that they believe in. And then the next lifetime they come back and they don't want any part of religion. And it isn't because they never cared, it's because at some point they dedicated an entire lifetime to that and now they have to dedicate themselves to being uh, in a partnership. And they have no clue how to do that. Sometimes when people have lives that they dedicate just to religion or just to their beliefs or just to humanity the next lifetime <clears throat> you have to dedicate yourself to relationships and boy is that difficult because you just don't know how to be in a relationship you just want to give to other people and you want to help and and you want to you know your whole life is like that unicorns and and cupcakes and rainbows and la 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 but it isn't like that in this lifetime this lifetime is pretty hard and you can't you don't have that group assistance that you had in another lifetime or that sharing that you had you know of food of a place to lodge you know now you have to be in a relationship and then dedicate yourself to your children and you don't have no idea how to do that because your soul has no memories of that you know it's like well you, you didn't do that in other lifetimes you were this and that and that but you weren't this you weren't a mother you didn't have to dedicate your energies and your thoughts and everything about you to your children to what you had you know your own loins it, they came out of you they're part of you they're little they're little mini me's you know they're little you's and you have to like stroke them and take care of them and don't let the things that happen to you happen to them be kind be loving and of course as a mother I am trying to help you for those of you that are younger that have your children that are small to to not do the things that I did, you know, because I have no, no clue how to be in a relationship or how to, you know, raise kids or now I have grandkids. And it's very difficult for me to separate myself from helping other people to focusing on my kid and on my grandchildren, which, you know, are growing up without me because they don't live where I live, you know. So I see them, but very little. I saw them recently, as you probably well know. But I don't spend enough time raising them or being with them and showing them love, true love that comes from me because it's unconditional now, it's compassionate love, it's forgiving love, it's love that is tender, that just opens my heart. That's where we need to be with our kids. We need to open our hearts to them and not be so worried about, well, is my partner cheating on me? What do you care what they're doing? What the hell? Who is, who is that? You need to focus on what you had, on what you believe, on what you love in your life. And if it's not your romantic partner, then say goodbye to that partner. Bid him farewell and be compassionate about letting him go because, or her, because they have a rough, a rough road ahead, just like the rest of us. None of us get away easy. We all have very hard, difficult lessons to learn in this lifetime. They crack your heart open one way or the other. They will. It will happen to you. It happens to all of us. And I'm sharing parts of you, me with you so that you learn easier than I did. But remember, no matter what is going on in your life, we still need to not be afraid not be afraid because we're all learning on different levels we all have a lot to learn in every lifetime and a lot to be compassionate about a lot to forgive and a hell of a lot more to be grateful for to be grateful that you're listening to me that you can hear me that you can see me that you can speak that you have movement that you have rationality in your life hi sorry interruption
being grateful. Being grateful is a very powerful energy because we must be grateful even for the lessons that we are learning which are not easy, not easy for us to learn, not easy for us to divulge them and be able to help others while we're learning at the same time. Very difficult. But only believe, believe in the things that you want to manifest in your life because you can. We all can manifest a better life for ourselves, more love, more compassion, more forgiveness, more gratitude. And we have a helping hand, always. We need to pray. We need to pray, always. Prayer is communication to the divine, whether we're praying to angels or praying to Jesus or praying to God or praying to saints or whatever you believe in. Prayer is a conversation with divine energy, whatever that energy is to you. It could just be source. It could just be the main energy. You're still communicating with it. Okay. In the end, there's only one main energy that we all belong to. I don't care what color you are or who you are. We all come from the same place whether it's an alien energy that we call God or it's a real God energy. I believe though, I do believe, but a lot of people believe in different things. You know, you start talking Jesus and they want to cut you off. Well, that's fine with me because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And prayer sometimes is answered immediately, immediately. I go to places and I look at people and I just see them as souls and you see them all toiling and moving around and learning and, and changing and and you just think wow how amazing is that look at all of these people and they're all different their thoughts are all different their, their actions are all different they're all going in different ways and doing different things and do they even know that we come back that there's many lifetimes that we are surrounded by angels and guides what do they believe in? What do they think? Some people don't believe in anything at all whatsoever. It's kind of crazy. But that's not me. I do believe. So not being afraid. Knowing that I pray every single day that my grandkids are being taken care of. That my son has assistance. That he's being protected by a higher power. By his guides, by God, by Jesus. I pray every single morning. And there it is, see? How he holds the children, how he holds our inner child in his arms. And he always gives us a an, hand. We just need to ask for it. We need to believe and ask through prayer, through conversation. You don't have to sit and pray a prayer. You can pray the Our Father. That's the one prayer that he did give us to communicate with God. And, but you can talk to the angels. Talk to Jesus. I talk to them like I'm talking to you right now. It's a, it's a conversation with divinity. Here's the next card. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If you believe enough and what you ask for the divine to help you with, to guide you, to bring into your life, it does come. First of all, we need to recognize it when it does come because it may not be exactly the same thing that we've asked for, but the essence of it is there. We need to learn to see it, you know, for what it is. And then we need to learn how to ask. Because if we did receive something and it wasn't exactly what we wanted or enough of what we needed, then we need to learn to ask the divine how to bring things into our lives that we truly need, that our soul truly needs to help with the growth spiritually we are very very connected to divine energy to our guides to angels to God we are so connected we just don't we have no idea how connected we truly are to divinity to our mothers that have passed to our fathers our grandparents tons of family members that have come before us that watch us that love us because we are parts of their descent we are parts of them that's what helps them come back and 
and just reincarnate because there's still there's the family tree there's still that group that soul group you know that they are part of and they're there they're there with us when they pass they're there connected through time and space through lifetime after lifetime so connected it doesn't break and no matter what has happened between you and other souls that have already passed let's say your grandparents or your mother or your father you didn't see eye to eye you had problems and you still love them you still think of them in a good way you still have a soul connection with them and they love you too no matter what has happened some lifetimes were good some were very difficult some were not always good because the lessons that you were learning in that lifetime were very hard and they had to be the teacher sometimes you were the teacher but still still there's that connection still there is that love that cord that still connects you with them okay and they are so much better now because now they are with divine energy now they see us from another angle they see us out of body they're in spirit they're still with you but they see you differently now and they're better for it because now they know a lot more than they knew then and even though things didn't happen perfectly when you were incarnated when you both were together when you spend time together on this plane on this physical plane you may have had fights you may have had problems things may have gone totally completely wrong but now that they see it from the other angle they see that that you know it just wasn't right you know that things were just lessons that you were learning and even though it was so hard they still see your love for them they still see that connection they still know it's there and they know that you still love them and still think about them and still send them well wishes and prayers and your loving heart to them as I was shuffling the tarot that I'm going to use this card kept coming out I put it in it came back out so this is the message the main message it's the knight of pentacles the knight of pentacles I see as a Taurus because my son is a Taurus so I see this as a Taurus a Taurus their ruling planet is Venus and Venus is all about love it's about happiness it's about money it's about your finances and love the Taurus loves family the family bonds are more important to them than anything to be surrounded by the people that they love their family they're, they're they are in it 100 percent and they're in it to make the money to support their family to be surrounded by nice things by pretty things but number one is their dedication their trust their love for their family their dedication and to keep going keep moving forward because something is coming into your life that's going to be very grounding it's going to be very loving so you need to be patient and work with it work with yourself work with taking care of who you are ultimately what you need to take care of what is it have you not gone to enough doctors go to the doctor and start from a to z go through everything make sure that you are in tip-top shape and if you're not ask what you can do to help yourself if you're drained of energy if you're tired if you uh, are overweight if you're underweight if you need glasses if you need hearing it whatever it is that you need you need to ask for it. you need to start going to doctors you need to take care of yourself your diet has to change I'm just saying you know this is not it's not gonna apply to everyone but if it applies to you and you've been putting it off and you don't want to go and you just you need to you need to go you need to take care of yourself because for the last few weeks that is the main topic of the reading taking care of who you are you need to have security number one that's the root chakra you need to feel secure you need to feel that you have a roof over your head and some type of friends or some type of people that support you not that cut you down or that tell you things that are negative you don't want that around you you need to be able to be creative. You need to be able to express yourself. You need to have love for yourself. You have to work your way up all the chakras. And then the ultimate is the connection to the divine, which we all need to have wide open so that the guidance that they give you, you don't miss it. You don't hear it. You need to cut back on your ego, though. Some of us are still learning you know, to tear down that ego, that tower moment where you have 
revelations that you need to work on yourself you need to work on your mind if you need to contact a counselor somebody that will listen to you some of us have had trauma trauma much many traumas in life sexual traumas physical trauma losing our parents losing something at a very young age where others have traumatized you by their words or their actions or beatings or I mean yes a lot of us go through some horrific horrific times but that's what makes us stronger that's what makes us teachers that's what makes us someone that can assist others or healers at that because we can help heal others we don't have to be selfish about those things we went through them for a reason and we made it most people don't make it they die the, the abuse is so strong that they don't live through it they can't live through it they can't face it they die but those people get a lot of points you know when it comes to divine energy divinity will take care of them protect them and then they come back and then they live another type of a life because they suffered suffered so so much so for those of you that listen to my channel and have many, many scars, know that you're not alone. We've all suffered many, many different things in life, but we need to be strong. Those are the things that make us stronger. And don't cut yourself down. Don't limit yourself. Keep moving forward. Learn something. Go back to school. Do you know how old I was when I went to college and got my degrees? I was 49. And it took me a few years, maybe I was a little younger, but around there, I was that old, you know. So you can't tell me that you can't do it, because yes, you can. There are grants out there, you don't have to pay for it. The government will help you if you just go to school. It took me a little while, because at that age, I could not remember anything. I had to learn anything, everything from scratch. But you know what? I passed with honors, because I got A's, you know. Just a girl that only barely made it through 10th grade. You know, I got my GED, I did all my shit. I went and got my AA, associate's degree in arts. I almost got a degree in science. But then my sister and I just decided to switch it to arts because of the classes that we had left and we had a lot of credits, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, we both graduated with honors because we got really, really good grades. So. I tell you, you're never alone. You can always ask for assistance. Assistance will come one way or another. And you can do things. You can do incredible things. Things that you never thought you could do in your life. You can. The limitations are in our own minds. You don't have to live in a relationship that's abusive, ever. You can get rid of it. I better get to the reading or else I'm going to run out of memory. So this week, coming up from the 12th to the 18th, present position, the wheel of fortune, angel of destiny, we are changing cycles that are ending, new cycles that are beginning, and they're fortunate, fortunate cycles that are beginning. What crosses us for good or for bad this week? So there's some things that are going to change in our lives coming up, okay? Because the Wheel of Fortune is the card that's representing us this week. Angel of Destiny. Our destiny is already written. I know that we can make, we think we can make our own destiny is what we think. But as we're making our own destiny, it kind of tweaks a little here and there. That's divine going boom, 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 moving you forward, but in the way that you're supposed to go because you have the idea of what you want to do but then it happens a little bit differently than what you envisioned and then you got to be open to that because always know that that's the divine energy changing it just a little okay and if you're not happy with it you can pray and you can keep moving forward and keep changing it it's 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 moldable it's mutable our futures are are like water they are fluid like the ocean there's waves that are fluid and we move within those waves those waves can change us the fluid the fluidity of our own lives can be molded and changed by what we think by what we think because we are making our our future we are making our path by what we think in life we are creating it 
And then the divine, of course, has its own plan for us. So it tries to tweak it a little bit. But we also are, we have free will, so we are telling it what we want. And it brings it to us, but sometimes we don't see things. Because there's ego in there, and there's a bunch of other stuff that make us blind to what the reality of life truly is. So we need to know that it's mutable. What crosses us is juggling, the two of pentacles. That means that we have to give and take a little bit. We have to give a little here, take some back, give a little to the other side. We have to juggle around our thoughts and the way that things happen because life is fluid. And it's not just going to be one certain particular way. There are changes coming, big changes in our lives because it's destined to go in a certain way. Now we're the ones that have to juggle it around a little bit to figure out what way is the best way and be able to cope and keep moving forward. You know, our finances keep moving forward. Our life keep moving forward. What we materialize into our lives to keep it moving forward. Our goals and our destiny, what's right above us is the choices that we need to make, the choices that we are envisioning, all the things that are before us. This is what we need to focus on. What exactly do we want? What is our main priority now as we move forward? We see what we have been able to manifest up to now. Now, what is the next step? What are the things that we are looking right before us, our choices? What do we really want to do? What really resonates with us, with our soul? Are we taking care of ourselves? Is our home okay? Is it stable enough for us if not we need to find that because that's number one that's the root chakra that's what we need to focus on we need to focus on our stability on our security that's numero uno and then from there on we build up on that okay so if that's steady if that's okay then we go to the next thing what else our jobs is it secure do we feel secure in our work keep moving forward keep building on that then our relationships, our children, are they taken care of? Are they going to the right school? Am I in the right area more or less? Can they handle what's going on with them in school? You know, there's many things, but that's how we do it, just little by little. So the distant past is the actions that we have taken to move our life forward, okay? This is the Knight of Wands. This is all about action, movement, forward, and fast movement. Sometimes we make choices that are too quick. We don't think about all these other situations that we have going on in our lives. And the Knight of Wands is great, but it moves too quickly. It, it burns the path. It just it, in, it just makes a mark for itself, but it keeps moving. It, it goes too fast, and it doesn't think of all of the details of all of the situations that could happen. So as we move forward this week, we have to be really careful of the choices that we make. We cannot make a quick choice this week or as we move forward in our lives. We really have to pay attention to detail. The choices that you're making, is it the right one? Is this what's going to bring you the security and the support that you need, you know? As you move forward, look. The Queen of Wands, creativity, being creative, loving the things that you create in your life, being able to slow your mind down, Juggle those choices as you move forward. As you see destiny weaving its web and moving you forward through life, you need to be able to make the right choice and not focus on so many things because the Seven of Cups is a little confusing. Because you want this, you want a good relationship, you want to meet somebody new, you want to take care of your children, you want a better job, or you like your job, or you wish you made more money. I mean, there's all these thoughts in our mind. And we need to clear them away so that we can relax. Because all that does is keep us like in a fight and flight type situation where we're like excited or just moving forward too quickly. And we're not making the right decisions. We have too many choices, too many thoughts rolling through our head. And only one of them is probably the best way to move forward at this time. Because you can't do all of the things that you want. And some of those choices are dreams, are wishes that we have put out to the universe. And they may be ready to manifest because this is the energy, that's the goal, the destiny, that's something that we are wanting to achieve in our lives. The main thing is probably what we are going forward to. So the other little things have to, you have to be careful because you could be heading in the wrong direction because it could be just keeping you all confused, thinking of too many things. So just try to focus on one. How are you going to move forward? And then be very creative, like the Queen of Wands. This represents Sagittarius. It represents Leo. It represents Aries. Fire signs. 
that could either come into your life to help you move forward or you're moving towards an influence of fire which is very creative energy as you move forward so keep that in mind you know so this week is going to be all about the choices that you make not moving too quickly and being very creative as you move forward as to what you're going to do or something of creativity that may come around or an opportunity that comes around for you to be creative to use your talents don't say no go ahead and do that recent events are the beginning of something something that you have started either a house move or the plans of a house move or a new job an ace of coins an ace of pentacles something that's grounded energy that you begin that brings you abundance later on just being very creative about how you move forward in life trying to use your talents if you can if not just being able to weed out the choices that are not the right ones to make at this time and only focus on the ones that are very very important the ones that you really need to work on now thinking of yourself this is representing you at this time being very celebratory you're you're having a good time so perhaps today for mother's day you're going to celebrate you're going to feel happy you know, uh, you, they're going to take you out. You've recently come from either a celebration of a birthday or someone else's birthday or someone else's celebration. Or you're just being very happy. You're joining with others and being happy about the things that you're doing in life. The people around you, they're wanting to start new things. You know, your environmental factors, the people around you, they're beginning new new paths or going on their own journeys and you're watching them. You're celebrating with them, their, their beginnings, the new things that they want to do in their lives. And this is also taking you on a new path because you're seeing them do it and you're going to try to begin one yourself because you have the Queen of Wands here. She's very creative and she does manage to manifest things that she wants into her life she thinks it and she goes towards it and she's able to manifest so you have to be careful because right now it looks like you're celebrating new beginnings that are going to be coming about within the next couple of weeks i know that this reading is supposed to be for a week but sometimes they extend it a little bit longer because this is this is a big reading it's not just three cards if it was a few cards and i'd say okay this is the immediate energy but this could be within you know a few weeks from now or a couple of months this all of this energy that's coming down it's being shown to us right now celebratory of the new beginnings that you're looking to do that you're looking at right now your choices okay your inner emotions you're afraid because it's taking you places. Here's the chariot. This is the representation of a water sign, a cancer to be exact. Also the time of cancer, which is coming up now within the next couple of months. Cancer should be beginning soon. So there's new changes that are coming upon us. This is movement forward in our lives, despite all of the situations that we have been through. Despite the setbacks, despite the disappointments, despite all the things that go on in your mind that set you back, that throw you off your game, the influence of other people that sometimes really hurt us, you know. So despite all of that, the new beginnings and movement forward in your life is coming. But you can't do anything to stop it. This is influence from the divine. Okay, that's three cards. Destiny destiny that enacts something new a new path this could be a new person that comes into your life to change things this could be a new friend this could be just a new path that you are embarking on it's going to happen whether you like it or not because it's just the influence that's coming down from the changes the cycle that ends and the new one that begins whether we like it or not it's going to happen okay I was going to shuffle and I said, no, don't shuffle. <laughs> don't do that. Look, you have another card from the divine. Strength. This represents the sign of Leo. This represents strength, 
fire. There's a lot of fire energy on the table here, mixed with cups and some. It's well, well grounded. The only thing not on here is the swords, the thoughts that betray us or that we're not doing that anymore. We're changing, we're growing, we're becoming stronger. Our inner emotions are going to be under control. This is of somebody that may lose control. These changes could cause you to feel imbalanced somehow. That's where the juggling comes in. That's where you need to try to keep yourself under control, well grounded. You have the Ace of Coins, which is a new beginning, and you have the Two of Coins. It's a small beginning, but it's something, and you need to keep yourself grounded because this new path that you're embarking on, it could be scary, and it will have pitfalls. He's right at the edge of a precipice, but he has faith. Here's his conscience going, oh my God, you're gonna make a mistake. Look at the big path that you're gonna take right now. Look at the step you're taking. And you're going, you know what? I have wings, I can fly. I don't have a problem with taking off that step off the precipice. I'm going to make it because you know you have support. Where is he? Right there. Divinity is there to help you with your steps, with the movement forward in your life. There is nothing to fear. We are spirit. Spirit cannot be destroyed. We're here to learn things, and we're here to sometimes jump off the edge and go, wow, I have faith. I have faith that I'm going to be supported. I have wings I can fly. I have my guides. I have my angels behind me that will protect me, that will help me. Of course, I'm not saying jump in front of a truck that you're going to be pulled out of there. Don't, you know, don't do stupid shit. I'm saying paths in lives, choices that you have, decisions that you need to make. Don't do things that are dumb that will end you because well it'll end your body but it's not going to end your spirit point you know taken that yes you're still going to live on don't be afraid but don't be afraid to make the choices that you need to make in your life that will help make you stronger you can keep your emotions under control see how she's got her hands on that lion's mouth the lion could tear her up but the lion's laying there letting her control him because your animalistic instincts to do things, to fly off the handle, to lose your freaking head and beat somebody to death because they messed with you, you keep that under control, okay? You've got control over your emotions, you've control over your outbreaks, you're controlling your life as it moves forward, even though it could move quickly. You have to juggle that control. You have to juggle that movement forward and keep, keep yourself under control. You will have the strength to make the changes that you need to make as you move forward within the next couple of months. Okay, because this reading is in the time of Cancer. Okay, and it's Jupiter that's bringing you these changes. Jupiter is the planet of abundance. It will expand things in your life, things that you no, don't have. So either a relationship for some of you, a new home for others, children for those that want children. You know, there's many things that are coming into our lives to help us. We just need to see that beautiful things are there to happen. Six of Cups, you will have support, as I was saying. You're going to have support from people from the past, family members, people from your child, childhood, blah, blah, blah. Your own children may help you or just the past, thinking of the things that have happened to you in your past, your family members, uh, nostalgic times that have passed. Right now we're thinking because we're thinking of our parents, our childhood, how much we loved them or what happened. Forgiveness for some of you is very important, compassion for others, gratitude for most, just being grateful, you know, for being alive, for the life that they gave us, for the time that they put into our lives, you know and the strength that they gave us to carry on you know, for some of us. It depends, everyone is different, but the Six of Cups is all about being able to gain some type of support from your past, from the things that have already happened in your life and the things that you don't want to happen again, the things that you want to change you know, um, as you move forward. This could also be a very important soulmate that comes from a past lifetime to help support you in this 
in this period of your life, you know. Uh, so you can't discount anyone that could be coming into your life at this time because they may be there just to support you, to help you end one cycle in your life so you don't have to do it alone and begin the next one. Whether they stay or not, it's up to your chart. It's up to how you deal with that person. Can, does that person give you strength to carry on? Does that person help support you and your children? Is this a, a good person with good intentions? Then by all means. It could be the same sex, it could be a different sex, it could be anyone. The fool also represents a gay person that could come into your life. So if you look at it as a person, it could be a gay person. It could be a new beginning for you or a new beginning for someone that cuts steps into your life, you know. As they fall, they drop right into your life, you know, and it could be that. I just think um, that I love this reading and the way that it went. So now, Mother Mary. My God, I'm not. <laughs> Hope, prayer, action. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a part two with the interaction part, okay, so that I have more time to explain the cards to you because, as you know, I will have messages that come from your departed family members. And for those of you that have your mother on the other side, I have a reading for that. But I'm going to, it'll be an interactive part. So Mother Mary says there's hope. I trust that God has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. All you have to do is believe. Believe that little angel is there watching over you all of the time and helping you get past some of the most difficult situations that we go through. Prayer, again, instead of worrying, I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. Prayer is necessary for all of us because this is how we get our guidance. This is how we tell ourselves what to do and how divinity can talk to us and we follow it. And then we need to take action. Today I take action related to the priorities that I have previously put off. It's very important that things you put off, do them. Do them now. Start them now. Remember, that's what this reading is all about. Know that I love you from my heart to yours. Have a blessed, blessed day. for now.